Well, hello and welcome back to the show. I'm sure you've noticed One Agency, the innovative real estate brand that's come out of nowhere to shake up the established real estate franchise model in Australia and New Zealand. One Agency CEO Paul Davies brings a lifetime of real estate experience to his new brand and has quickly built a following of very capable business leaders looking for change and innovation. With the average real estate business in Australia reporting a profit of just 15%, Paul's mission and dominating focus is to help establish competent real estate business owners into a business that is both effective and economical. And you'll hear him share the news that a number of one agency business owners are recording profits of up to 85% after operating costs. My personal observation after this interview is that one agency is a proven business model that makes sense. By breaking away from the traditional real estate agency template, one agency business owners get to keep much more of what they earn. Paul subscribes to a philosophy that consumers are now able to access products and services for much less in the new economy, and he's right. So why not offer a high-value, low-cost real estate business concept that leverages the economies of scale to create a proven operating model? In less than seven years, Paul's Drive and Energy has built a brand with more than 100 offices in Australia and New Zealand. His ability to sell his brand and build a great team around him makes him an aspiring leader in the new real estate economy. Whether you're a real estate business owner, one of the sales team, or even someone brand new to our industry, I challenge you not to be moved and lifted by Paul's passion, and I'm very grateful to him for sharing so much in this interview. And by the way, Paul's just written a book, and in our enthusiasm during this session, we forgot to mention the title, which is How to Profit from Real Estate Business Ownership. The subtitle is Essential Reading for Any Existing or Aspiring Real Estate Business Owner kind of says it all, I think. I've included some more info about the book and a link to order your copy in the show notes. All you need to do is go to topagentsplaybook.com forward slash one seven. Well, hi, Paul, and welcome to the show. Oh, thanks very much, uh, Ray. Thank you. How are you doing? Oh, well, yes, uh, we're having a wonderful time at one agency. We're on the right of our lives here, so I have to say I'm doing well. Well, I wanted to get you on the show because uh, I'd heard a lot about what you were doing uh, mm. and you built a brand from, from ground zero pretty much. So uh, I'm interested to learn more about that. Can we get started? Can you take me back to the beginning? What was the inspiration behind One Agency? Well, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, to be honest with you, I've been a pretty slow learner. Um, I've been in the industry since 1972 when I was 18. So this is my 44th year. And I didn't get it right for a lot of my career. I just uh, followed the way that most agents went. I worked for somebody else for 13 years. Uh, I then, uh, he, actually funny story, the guy bought himself a Rolls Royce. And uh, I watched him taking off in the Rolls Royce one day and I thought, my God, I'm doing the work. He's driving the Rolls Royce. What the hell's going on here? And 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 it, it, I went, I sat back at my desk, Ray, and it's like someone had hit me over the head with half a house brick. I was literally stunned because up until that moment, I'd been quite happy and didn't really want to make any changes. But that realization of how um, inequitable uh, my arrangement was with my boss. And I liked him. He was a friend. It was nothing to do with that. It's just that I was doing all the work. He was reaping the rewards. And I, it, I just saw it very clearly in that moment that I just couldn't do that anymore with my life. My life is too valuable for that. Sure. So I then um, opened a typical real estate business. Now, what uh, year turned, are we talking? Uh, that was in uh, 1986. Okay. And whereabouts? Now, that was in Balgala, which is just near Manly yes. in yep. Sydney. Yes, of course. Yep. And I became one of the first 30 uh, agents in New South Wales to join the Ray White Group. Okay. Um, was on their steering committee to help grow the group. And I was with Ray White for 10 years, and they were good days, to be honest, back, back in those days. Um, but it was the typical real estate uh, suburban business with a shop front and uh, reasonable overheads and trying to build my rent roll and just, you know, it did quite well. It was a good business. But I was always the sort of person to start thinking outside the box. And I met with a colleague. I was having a bit of a whinge about the costs of running my business. And we decided to merge, to buy another business and merge our three businesses into one. 
So there were economies of scale. We only had one shop rent. We only needed uh, one this, one that, one the other, and instead of three. And there were some sensibilities there and good economies of scale. And we ended up with a very large business. It was in Mossman, which is one of the premium suburbs of Sydney. Yes. And we had about 30 staff and uh, it was a yelling and jumping and screaming arrangement. And it, it was a good business, but I must say it was very stressful to run because we'd thrown all these people together and expected it to work. Our revenues were very strong. But what happened very quickly was that um, the revenues were pouring in the front door and pouring out the back door just as quickly. And I'm sitting in the office as a spectator watching the money flow through but not getting my bit. Um, <laughs> well, some, somebody describes it to me, um, too much month at the end of the money. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's like a big um, bin and all the money goes in the bin and you pay everybody else first. You've got to pay uh, your bank loans. You've got to pay the landlord. You've got to pay your staff. You've got to pay everybody else gets paid before the owner of the business. Yep. Of course. Otherwise, you've got no business. And some months there was something left in the bottom of the pot and sometimes there wasn't. But it was always stressful worrying about that. Yes. So um, I decided to get out of all of that because it was just too hard. And I opened my own business, boutique business called Paul Davies Property. And this was a life-changing event for me because I went from $200,000 a month operating costs to $2,000 a month operating costs. Nice. And I went, wow, wow, I've got not just the monkey, but the whole tribe off my back. Uh, this is fantastic. And I was thrilled. But what happened after a short amount of time was that I was having, and I noticed that I was having trouble listing and competing against the other major players in my marketplace, which I shouldn't have had because I was long established, well regarded, I think, good track record and I shouldn't have been encountering the problems that I had and I realized that what was going on was that my perception in the marketplace was poor in other words I was small I look small other agents and some of them to be honest with you Ray I wouldn't have employed them yeah uh, they weren't particularly good but they had all the bells and whistles and the big brand and national this and blah 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 that I didn't have any of that and I was getting beaten and I was whinging to my wife about it one night. And this is the second life-defining moment in my life. The first one was the Rolls-Royce epiphany. And the second one, I'm saying to my wife, you know, it's really good having a business that doesn't cost much to operate, but it's not an effective business. And she said, well, look, why don't, if, it's, if having a small economical business is sensible, why don't you add a brand to that? Uh, but do it economically so everyone can enjoy the benefits. Right. And honestly, Ray, all the lights went on and apparently I went to my office for about four days, came out with a business plan and that ended up after about a year and a half of development becoming one agency. What year are we talking, Paul? Nine, uh, 2007. Okay, okay. It's funny it how about, uh, when you're in the jungle I sometimes you can't see the obvious, eh? That's right. Uh, it just, uh, it all seems so clear to me now because in business, not just real estate, but any business, it, it, what you make, uh, what you create income wise is interesting, but what you keep at the end of the day is really the only measure of success. Of course. And, and I don't know a single agent that stops earning. We all earn to varying degrees at varying times. Um, but I know a lot of agents that run out of making a profit and particularly business owners, you know, operating a business and they don't have enough profit yep. because their profit margins are too thin. And if you look at reliable benchmarking in Australia and New Zealand, uh, they'll tell you the typical shop front anywhere in Australia, a real estate business uh, retains about 15 cents in the dollar on average. Right. And that's considered to be normal. And I think it's highly abnormal. To run a business where you're going to spend 85 cents to, to hopefully make 15, it's incredibly risky because you only need a small increase in your operating costs, a small drop in revenue, and you're in no profit land. And you're that's why red. so many yeah. businesses go broke. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, my mission is to establish agents in uh, a business that's both effective, A, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment, and B, economical. Right. 
uh, so that when you earn fees, you get to keep them. And we have members where their profit margin's 85%. It's completely reversed. Yes. 15% running their business, 85% profit after all operating costs. Nice. Now, let me rewind for a sec. Yep. 2007, you've gone into your office um, four days. You've come out with a business plan for one agency. Yep. How, how did you get the 747 off the ground? What happened next? Look, it was an interesting story. I was going to partner up with an IT company. I met uh, a gentleman who owned a Hub Online at the, at the time, and he unfortunately just sold out to realestate.com. And he said, there is a person I can introduce you to who became a friend, a guy called Barney McGrath. Right. Barney's related to John McGrath. Right. And Barney used to work in McGrath's with John and then um, has also worked internationally in branding. And at the time I met him was a consultant to the real estate industry. Yes. And <laughs> up until that point, it, is, it was just a concept in my head that my wife had stimulated. And I went and I met with Barney and Barney's a very straightforward sort of person. And he said, well, you know, what have you got in your mind? And I told him and he said, I don't get it. And I said, well, <laughs> that's good. He said, no, it's not. He said, you're wasting my time here. I said, no, I'm not wasting your time. I'm coming at things from a different angle. So without prejudging it or saying another thing, if you will, just have a look at my business plan. I'll meet you a couple of weeks. Tell me what you think. Give me a sanity check. Okay. So he agreed to do that. And I met back with him a couple of weeks later and he sat there and he had the business plan in his hand. He dropped it on the desk and he looked at me and I said, well, what do you think, Barney? And he got his finger, he tapped it on top of it, he looked me right in the eye and he said, Paul, that's got legs. Nice. And every cell in my body was ignited, Ray, because up until that point, I was just in my own head, I thought it was a good idea, but I really didn't have a sanity check on it and I knew that Barney wouldn't waste four seconds of his time on something that didn't have some, some fabric of reality or, or yes. um, sense of sol sol solidarity. Yeah. So um, that was the point that I decided to go forward and get my checkbook out and build it because I thought, well, uh, I think I'm on the right course here. And yeah. I knew that if I could get one person, I could get three. If I could get three, I could get 10. If I could get 10, I could get 100. And so it was. And that was the model that, that you created, you know, that, that was the model that you launched that, that you're still using today. Correct. Okay. And speaking of which, where are you today, Paul? How many offices and how many agents? Just ballpark oh, that for me. Gosh, uh, we're well up over 100 businesses. There's about 220 uh, agents on our website. Uh, we've just got our first person that has agreed to join us in New Zealand. The Lovely. paperwork's just on its way back. So yeah. we're in all states and territories of Australia. And look, Ray, it it makes sense to a lot of agents. There's two sorts of agents that really seem to enjoy what we offer. There's the salesperson who's working for another agent. Yes. Who's well-established, well-connected and knows what they're doing. They don't walk into their real estate office every Monday morning and the boss lines up their listings and says, Paul, good morning. Thank you for coming to work. Here are your six listings for the week. Please sell them. The, it just doesn't happen. The agent that we deal with creates the business themselves via good um, coaching and training and mentors, the sorts of yourself and, and, and all the people that, that you know and others. Yes. There's, there's yep. a lot of very excellent support for an agent out there now. So we suggest to that agent that if they're doing it for themselves, working under the umbrella of someone else's business, they can do it for themselves in their own enterprise, but not the traditional business ownership enterprise, a new way of doing business that's economical and easy to operate and where they earn a fee, they get to keep most of it. Yeah. So they go from, um, if they're writing um, 300 um, GCI and keeping, uh, well, typically, you know what, this, what, what happens out there in the industry, uh, between 30, 40, 50% typically is what they get to keep. Um, they move up to a position where they can operate their business in totality for around $50,000 a year. Yes. Uh, we don't charge that. We only charge a flat fee of nine fifty a month plus GST. But all the other little bits and pieces that are 
your telephone, your car, many of the things they're already paying for. Yep. But they can do the whole thing for about 50000 a year, providing they don't have a commercial premises. Okay. So they go from keeping roughly half or less of the take to keeping uh, 250 out of 300. And then where it gets very interesting is that they tend to write more business when they get into their own business. Because the marketplace likes it, Ray. They, they respect someone that's having a go. It's, you'll know you, so it's an Aussie thing. Good on you, mate. Yep. The, yep, the, the support course. they'll get from the marketplace is terrific. They'll be more motivated because they get to keep every single cent of every fee. Yeah. So they tend to write more business. So someone that's writing 300 would go to 350 or 400 after a year or two years at the most. But their operating costs stay the same. It's still 50 to 60. Yes. So their income's then gone up if if they then write 400 they're keeping 350 approximately yeah it's getting very interesting so it's kind of all about the money which well it's not just the money it's the it it liberates the it's a strong word to use but it these are the sorts of words that come back to us from people that have joined yeah they don't have to um salute to anyone else anymore they can run the business the way they want to if they make a suggestion that their current boss current boss may or may not take it up but when they run their own business, they can run, they can do it their way, which, yes. which a lot of agents love. Yep. Um, it's 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 a it's a real sense of freedom and empowerment. The agents are, are um, and also there's a certainty there, Ray. People think that they are secure working for someone else. Yes. And they are only to a point, because when you're working for someone else, you don't know what they're going to do with their business. It's their call. Um, they could change the rules, sell the business, uh, do anything, and you're subject to those changes. Okay. Okay. But if you can show, let's say somebody's in another business model today, if you can if you can sit down and show somebody where they can save and save substantially, which you've obviously yes. done, yes, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Well, that's the other group that are showing great interest in one agency. Okay. Well, I was 10 years with Ray White. I was then 10 years with PRD Nationwide. That was the Mossman business. I had 20 years at that end of the stick. Yeah. And and it's great to be in a group. I'm not anti-groups. I'm just – I'm not anti-anything. I'm The only the only thing I'm uh, trying to do is, is is make everything more economical because in, the, in this world, everything is becoming more economical. Yeah. And uh, you can buy anything cheaper now, uh, whether it's a motor car, an airline ticket or whatever you want. So unless you're in line with that – a global philosophy, you're going to be left behind. And what's happening in the franchise world is, I believe, they're being let get they're they're, they're behind the times. Yeah. Because what they charge, and and I know from my own twenty years of experiences, uh, is not commensurate with it's not value for money. Yeah. Uh, it's good. I'm not against them at all, but they just charge too much, and and I can't. I couldn't validate that cost when I was with those groups. It's a penalty system often where the more – I was talking to a guy the other day. He said, I had my a record month. I did double my turnover. I said, that's fantastic. And he said, do you know what my reward was from head office? I said, no. He was with one of the major groups. He said, well, it was double the fees, Paul. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I get it. It's, so, Well, I mean, the world the world is changing, isn't it? It um, is. Uh, I – um. I'm a big fan of uh, that we have here in Canada the the new um, the new I call it taxi service called Uber. Yes. Um, do you have Uber in Sydney yet? We do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got like a normal cab fare from downtown Toronto to to my home here in Oakville, which is about oh it's about forty minutes south of of downtown. It's about a hundred and twenty dollars in a cab. So that was the weekend before. Uh, this weekend, I was we were downtown again. We we uh, caught Uber and came home. It was like fifty seven dollars or something, I think. Wow. So so less than wow. half. So the world is changing. Uh, we look yes. at Amazon dot com and how they've bought. Um, I guess not you know not just to books but to retail as well. To the point where they're affecting the malls and the traffic and things like that. So I guess yeah. our world is changing so rapidly. So it sounds like you're adopting a lot of those new changes and ideas to the real estate industry. Well, we think we're leading the way, certainly here in Australia. I'm not aware of a model anywhere else in the world that does what we do. Yeah. Um, and I've just written a book just to, uh, not about one agency, but about uh, how to profit in real estate business ownership. And Tom Panos wrote, wrote the forward for me. And, and that talks about all the pluses and minuses. I mean, business ownership's not for everybody. 
But business ownership is different today, Ray, and that's the point I really want to emphasize yeah. uh, because we've all grown up watching our bosses run businesses, wiping their brow, how am I going to pay for this? Oh, it costs so much for that. And that was absolutely true for them and it was for me as well. Yeah. But it's not like that. It doesn't have to be like that anymore. So you can have your own business now. It can be very economical to operate. Yep. You can express yourself the way you would like to in the marketplace and you can keep all your fees. I didn't know about your book. Tell us a little bit about your book. What's it called and where can we get it? And I'll put the uh, contact info uh, up on the show notes with this uh, podcast. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Um, well, it's only just been launched about a week ago. I think it's available online uh, with Amazon uh, or, or a couple of others as well. But, I'll get, uh, I'll get the links to... from, from your team and we'll put them up oh, on the show notes. So if anybody's listening to this, yeah. grab, I can already imagine it's awesome. Grab a copy of Paul's book. Uh, I'll put the link here and uh, and you can certainly find out more about it. I mean, it's. I think it's a fascinating oh. philosophy and I've learned things speaking mm. to you in the last 20 minutes that, uh, uh, that I, I didn't even know. Tell me, here's here's the first question I wrote down when 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 I knew that we were going to be speaking. Yeah. In such a crowded marketing landscape, in such a crowded real estate marketing lands, landscape, how did you go about starting the brand from scratch? From scratch, in so far as how did you reach out those first few members, Paul? How did you how did you bring them on board? What was the aha moment for for them? Was it about the thing we've just been talking about, or it, or was it perhaps uh, a, a, a split away and more about the leadership and culture of your group, which I've heard from your members is, is first class. Oh, thank you, Ray. The culture uh, of my group is the most important thing. And I know that someone will copy the business model because it makes sense. Uh, and we're not concerned at all about that because no one can copy our culture. And, and that is that we really care about our members. The stories I hear of how some franchisees have been treated by their franchisors who they're paying their fees to it's just mind-boggling uh, we are nothing like that we want to look after our members uh, we want to ensure that their businesses are operated economically and that they're having um, a profitable and enjoyable time of their real estate career and you'll know yourself if someone's making a profit and enjoying it you're so much better at what you do yeah yeah, uh, you're not. Well, I remember when I was running my business, I was stressed, you know, three quarters of the time, grumpy, unhappy. What am I? How am I going to fix this? How am I, you're a problem solver ninety percent of the time. Yeah, and so money no, worries are, are, are one of the awful. most crippling things that can affect awful. us in in business when uh, when the chips are down. And conversely, when you're making when you when you're making money and you're keeping it. Um, like you said before, it's not what you make; it's what you keep. When you're yep. making money and you're keeping it, and things are going well. That yep. that that weighs on the other end of the scale. It gives you momentum and it gives you confidence, yep. and and yep. you you walk a little taller and you got a bit of a swagger, and it's just it's just a great feeling. Well, that's right. Our members report back; they just they can't believe how different they feel. And I had a gentleman uh, over in Perth, and he joined us, and he said, "Paul, I knew that I was going to make more money. I get that, but I really didn't." realize how I would have such a sense of freedom and, and I feel really happy. Yeah. And, and he actually had a tone of a, a surprised tone in his voice. Yeah. He didn't, you know, he's, I don't think he was used to feeling happy in real estate. Yeah. And we get a tremendous satisfaction out of that. And I personally, when I set, I'll tell you what I get the most pleasure from, Ray, and I say this very sincerely. I meet a young agent. He may be in his 30s. He may be married with a you know, children. He's working very, very hard for an agent who's not particularly appreciative and is taking a huge chunk of his income. It's not it's no one's fault. Just set up wrong. I'm not having a go at anyone. Yep. And you get that person, you get that young, diligent, hardworking, good human being, put him into his own business. He he we give exclusivity of areas. He's the one agency member in that area. He's already well known. He builds his business. He keeps he is financially set up for life then. Yep. And it's just a tremendously satisfying feeling for us when we set people up like that. Yeah. Speaking of that, can you describe a typical one agency owner, who uh, or a, a one agency member? Who are we? Who are we talking about? Gosh, well, a lot of them are single operators, and then we're getting bigger businesses coming to us now that are okay. disenchanted, you know, paying fees. Yeah. Um, L, we had uh, 
a, a large hooker office in Perth recently swapped over to us and he's increased his in, uh, turnover in, incredibly and his uh, fees were about 20000 a month. They're now down to nine fifty a month. So um, he's incredibly happy. Uh, we have a lot of um, smaller players that come to us. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's a lady in the central coast uh, just above Sydney here, Paula Taylor. Right. She's been with me a number of years. I think she was with McGrath's, then she had an independent business, and eventually she's come to us. And I went up and saw her a while ago, and she has a little office in her home. She said, Paul, I'm just having the most marvellous time. I sold three last weekend. I, you know, she's so happy. And she said, I'm buying my house. I've just bought myself a Mercedes. And there's a little shop down the road that I can get quite inexpensively. And I said, what are you going to do, Paula? She said, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't want it. So I said, good on you. Keep it <laughs> lean. Yeah. That is <laughs> – and, and this is a lot of the – you'll laugh, Ray. Sometimes I get young guys coming in. They're so hyped up, full of testosterone. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I say, look, <laughs> okay. I'm very excited for you. This is sounding very good, but I'd like you to sit down, take three deep breaths, drink this lavender tea, just relax for a minute because <laughs> you, you, you might not need all that. <laughs> and, I, and I've had members grow their businesses, then ring me and go, you know, Paul, uh, we're doing well, but actually, we were actually doing better when we were smaller. Yeah. So it's a trap. You've got to be careful with that. Yeah, it is a trap. Yeah, it, well... You've been there. You've been through the yeah. the craziness of the two hundred thousand dollar a month uh, expenses and whatever it is. It's uh, that's the right word. It is crazy, and it's and it's not a and it's not a happy place. Um, uh, where is real estate going? Do you think? And and how does one agency fit into the picture? What's the future looking like? Well, I think that's a great question. I call our business a sustainable business model because the more economical we can make the operating costs. And I'm working on it all the time. If I can come up with a new idea to reduce the operating costs for my members, I'm onto that. Yep. I'm not interested in ramping up. I'm, I'm interested in, 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 in reducing, uh, and not turnover, but costs, uh, because they don't, often they don't relate. But the future, look, we're having the most fabulous time in Sydney in real estate. As you know, Melbourne's going well, but the rest of Australia is having a tough time. Yes, I, I want my members to have what I call a bulletproof sustainable business. Now, if you've got a profit margin of, of up, uh, let's call it 70 to 85%, which a lot of my members operate in, I mean, you can have, you, your, your turnover can halve. You can have a 50% increase in your operating costs, which is highly unlikely. I don't know where it would come from, but even if it did, and those people would still be making money. Yeah. All the other business owners in Australia would have gone broke. Yeah. Well, you're future-proofing them then. Yep, that's exactly right. Future proof yeah. and sustainability. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, you know, it's the sun. The sun's not going to stay out forever. It doesn't matter what, what oh. market you're in. And uh, and you and I have seen uh, some awesome markets, and we've seen some some long, tough, lean years as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and it's and it's interesting. You know, you talk you talked about the younger thirty year old and somebody coming up, somebody kind of maturing in this market in their business, and things are going well. They've yeah. never really known um, a 1991. They've never known no. how, how, how bitter and difficult and, and yeah. recession-like it, it is. So, you know, yeah. it's just so important to, uh, to keep something away and make sure your business model is doing as, as best uh, as it can. Yep, um, totally agree. Who's, who's your inspiration? Who inspires you? Well, I've got a dad by the name of Bill as well. So. Okay. I, I did have Ray. He passed away in 08. Okay. Uh, okay. Sadly, just just when I launched one agency, so oh, we didn't really? get to see okay. the success. But yeah, uh, he's been my greatest inspiration in my life, and and, and we worked together in real estate uh, for nearly twenty years. Uh, so yeah, I have to say, my dad. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and, and then I've tried to follow my own road. I try not to. Well, I certainly haven't copied anyone else with one agency. A few people have said, where did you get the idea from? I said, it's actually a light bulb moment that yeah. my, my wife gave it to me, to be honest, and yeah. that's how it happened. Yeah, it's where uh, some of the best ideas come from. If you could, here, here's a question I, I like to ask uh, um, people that I'm interviewing from time to time. If you could yeah. buy a, a book for your members, is there, I don't know if you're a reader or not, but is there a book that sticks out in your mind as something that, uh, apart from your own book, of course, um, uh, a book that that you'd 
you'd like to buy and something, what would you give your members? You know, rather than suggesting a book, I'd like members to sit with, I'm a great believer in uh, the ability of the individual. Okay. Where they source their information from, uh, there's such a variety, we touched on that earlier. Um, the, the mind has to be open to it though. You can't teach anyone anything, they've got to learn. Uh, and unless they're open to it, and then when they are open to it, uh, they will they will draw to them what they need to learn yes. most. Yes. And uh, whether that's uh, via your network of uh, information or anyone else's is really, it's up to the individual because we're all so different, Ray, and we learn in different ways. And what we have to learn is different as well. Uh, I bang on about the cost of operating businesses. And well, some people already know that. <laughs> that's been my hard, that's been my hard learned lesson. Yeah. Well, and, uh, that's so, the saying, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear or something like that. I think that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So I have great belief in, in people in general. I see it. And interestingly, when I meet, and I meet agents every day, thinking about their future and what they're going to do. And they're, they're very apprehensive. They're, they're caught nervous, even a little scared uh, if you talk about business ownership. And I look at them and I think, my God, this person writes 600 GCI. They're an impressive human being. They're articulate. They're intelligent. My God, this is a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, this, this, you couldn't, this person could not fail. Yeah. You couldn't stop them with a tank. And yet they have these doubts because doubting is human. It's normal. And for your listeners who are thinking, oh, no, business ownership might not be for me, fair enough, the thoughts with everybody that's considered it. But take the thought process a bit further. Where do you want to be in five years from now? Do you want to continue working for the, for, for the present agent or whatever it is you're doing? And um, know that you are much more than you are today, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. You, you're going to grow. You're going to become a, a bigger human being, if you like. If you step into this unfamiliar territory and challenge yourself, you will become a more competent and capable person. Yeah. And it's never been easier also, Ray, the business ownership today. I mean, God, when I did it back 30, 40 years ago, when it 30 years ago, it, there, was the, there was no one agency that was, you know, you had, well, I'm going to go and have to find a shop front. I'm going to have to, you know, you virtually had to work it all out. Yeah. And well, now it's so simple. You have worked it out, though, and you've, you've got a formula which is, yep. which, is, which is proven in the field and it's been proven over yep. time since, since you've been, you know, rolling out um, – your memberships yep. and, and your, your licenses to to agents. One of the things yep. that w when I when I think about um, how conservative some people are and, and they hold back, do you think that part of their hesitancy might be might be thinking, okay, well, where am I going to invest the next five years of my life? I really need to make the right decision. And sometimes the inertia or the pressure of that decision is just so ov overwhelming they end up doing nothing. Yeah, it is. That's correct. Making the decision is the hardest part of the whole deal. Uh, once you've made a decision, you move beyond the agony of deciding. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of how am I going to do it? Yeah. And there's always a way of working anything out. And and once you jump in with both feet, there's so much clarity because you're committed. Yes. Yeah. And all manner of things will happen to support you. You'll be surprised. Yeah. And the chance of failure... This is a very important point. I say to people, well, you know, are you all of a sudden going to stop? Do, do, do people ring up the office you're in at the moment? And may I speak to a salesperson? I want to list my house. No. They ring up. They say, can I speak to Paul Davies, please? Uh, we met him, blah, blah, blah. It's a person. This is about people. The real estate business is about people. If you've got a following and people are confident to list with you, whether you work for XYZ real estate or ABC real estate or your own enterprise, that won't change. So you're going to continue listing and selling real estate just like you did before. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So what is your risk factor? And if you follow our lead and you run your business economically, it's only going to cost you a few thousand a month. I don't know anyone that's going to stop selling. You might 
sell less for whatever reason. I, I've got no idea. It doesn't suit you, whatever. You'll sell some and that will no doubt offset any of the costs that you've incurred because it's all low cost. Yeah. And then the worst possible thing that could happen to you is you'd have to go back and knock at the door of the office where you used to work or one of the competitors would grab you because they're going to make money out of you. That's right. So there's very little risk. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you've been thinking about it, um, go to oneagency.com.au, have a chat with Paul, have a chat to his team and uh, and learn more about it. Paul, I want to thank you so much for your time um, today. I also want to say congratulations. Uh, it's, uh, it's truly entrepreneurial what you've done. Um, you've got a great brand with great respect in the marketplace. You're going gangbusters. Like you said, it's a very exciting ride. And uh, I take my hat off to you and congratulations. Thanks very much, Ray. Nice to speak with you.